Okay, First Kings chapter 20, verse 22. We'll pick up where the prophet. Then a prophet shows up. It's a good spot to stop for the night. And the prophet came to the king of Israel. The battle's over. And Ben Hadad is taken off. And said unto him, Go, strengthen thyself, you know, get some food. Get some rest. It's been a bad battle. And mark. Pay attention. And see what thou doest. Behave yourself. Do right. Be right. For at the return of the year, the king of Syria will come against thee. So he's coming back to battle. He's not done. He's going to rest. You rest. He's going to strengthen himself. You strengthen yourself. And the servants of the king of Syria, Ben-Hadad, said unto him, Their gods, small g-o-d-s, are the gods of the hills. That's why we lost. We're fighting on a hill. Their gods are stronger. And you're talking about nations that have gods of everything. Gods of water, God of sun, God of death, God of life, God of fruits, God of vegetables. And now we got a military God. We got a God that, that he fights for the hills, but he doesn't fight in the valleys. You got a God's in the, in the valleys, but they don't fight in the plains. So the God that we were with that afternoon wasn't very good. Therefore, they were stronger than we. But let us fight against them in the plain. So we'll have a stronger gods of the plain than their gods of the hills. And surely we shall be stronger than they. So we have the gods over that gods, which that gods is greater than that gods, and those gods are greater than those gods. And that gods is, I mean, it's just messed up when you're involved with multiple idols and imagery and religion and gods how do you keep track and what do you do if you would have won that battle on the hill oh then that god of the hill he's good until you fight the next battle on the hill and then he's bad i mean it's messed up and they're still speaking in 24 and do this thing take the kings away Chapter 20, verse 1. And Ben Haddad, the king of Syria, gathered all hosts together. And there were 30 and 2 kings with him. Those are the kings. Get rid of them. We don't need them. Next play, 20, verse 12. And it came to pass when Ben Haddad heard this message as he was drinking, he and the kings in the pavilion. Verse 16. And they went out at noon, and Ben-Hadad was drinking himself drunk in the pavilions. He and the king, and the thirty and two kings that helped in verse 1. So in a roundabout way, they're, they're saying smartly to their king, We don't need those men. All they did was get you drunk. Yes, God is behind this battle. battle. He sent a prophet to Ahab saying, listen, you're going to win. But being intoxicated and drinking with the kings and the leaders in a pavilion and not on the battlefield, that didn't help you too much either. So the servants of the king say, hey, get rid of those kings. And if we get rid of those kings, there will be no drunken bra anymore. That's, good. That's a nice way of telling the king, you know what? Your drunkenness failed us. And number thee an army. Let's go at it again. Now notice this is not the king saying, this is his servant. Like the army that thou hast lost. That was the first battle. We lost. <laughs> Let's get the same number, horse for horse. How many horses did we have the first time? All right, grab them again. Same number. And chariot for chariot. How many chariots do we have? How many did we lose? How many do we need now? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a battle here. We're going to do the battle with the gods of the hills versus the gods of the plains. And we're going to have all the same horses, all the same men, 
all the same chariots. We got rid of those drunken kings that got you drunk, king. Remember, that's a nice way of saying, king, you know what? You're the one that failed. Now, they didn't know it's God of the Bible. So verse 25, let's have horse for horse, chariot for chariot. Let's do this again. Because we got to give the God of the plain the same advantage that we gave to the God of the hill. Well, if he's such a God, why do you need anything? And we shall fight against them in the plain. That's our God. And surely we shall be stronger than they by our God. That's what they're saying. Listen, you got the same number of horses, you got the same number of chariots, you got the same number of men, and you got your butt kicked the first time. We're not relying on the men. That's good. We're not relying on the horses. That's greater. We're not relying on the chariots. That's even better. We're relying on the God of the plain. That's not so good. Everything's there. The Bible says, do not put your trust in horses. Do not put your trust in men. Exactly what the Syrians are doing. But they're putting their trust in another God. The God of the plain. Truly, we shall be stronger than they. And he, Ben-Hadad, hearkened unto their voice and did so. And it came to pass at the return of the year, just like the prophet said in 22. It's a new year. I would take for the return of the year. That Ben-Hadad numbered the Syrians. Here we go again. We got problems with the Syrians today, 2018. Everybody hates Israel. Even a great Christian nation as America has forsaken Israel in ways for oil and Arabians and went up to Apic. Now I would have gone up to Apic. Up. That's a mountain or a hill. That's not a plain. Up. And when you read went up, why did they go up to Jerusalem? Because Jerusalem's on a mountain to fight against Israel. Here we go. Battle number two. And the children of Israel were numbered, and were all present, and went against them. And the children of Israel pitched before them like two little flocks of kids, goats, little baby goats. But the Syrians filled the country. They're outnumbered. Israel is always outnumbered. But when Israel goes in the power of God, the Father Jehovah, God of all, God of creation, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you could have two men against this entire nation and you're going to win and there came a man of god here we go ahab is under a, a wicked rulership in israel by his wife you know his wife is the one that goes to church ahab doesn't he has nothing to do he's got two religions in the land he's got jeroboam's calves he's got baal by his wife and priests of both, and, and altars of both, and prophets of both. And yet God still comes up to Ahab and says, Hey, working with you. We'll see why in a moment. And the man of God and spake unto the king of Israel, Ahab, and said, Thus saith the Lord, Because the Syrians have said, This is what they said, The Lord is the God of the hills. No, it's a G-O-D. No S. No small letters. L-O-R-D. Jehovah. Capitalized. But he's not the God of valleys. Kind of funny because they said plain. And the Holy Spirit tells us plains are the valleys. So going down in. But it's funny when we read it says they went up to Apex. But in order to go to a plain or go down into a valley you got to go down. So the God of the valley, the God of the plains, that's our mighty God. And God heard him say that. The Lord is a God of hills. So Jehovah, his only domain on this entire universe. Never mind here. The entire universe of God of the Jews. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jehovah, the great I am. He's in charge of the hills and that's it. He's not in charge of the mountains. He's not in charge of the water like Neptune. He's not in charge of corn. He's not in the charge of grapes. He's not in the charge of children. He's not the child, uh, the God of you know childbearing. He's just the God of the, they limited the God of the Bible. 
and God's going to get upset. Because they said the Lord is the God of hills, but he is not the God of valleys. Therefore will I deliver all this great multitude in thy hand. Now look at the anger of God. And there will be people when you go out into a public ministry and you will witness the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, that's not what Jesus would do. You're turning people away. We are doing what the gospel told us. Go ye door to door. Go preach the gospel. What are you doing? My church is just as better. I don't need your religion. I don't need your booklets. I don't need your track. What I'm doing for God is much better. Do you see my God that says we come and, and populate the universe and aliens out there and planet? That, that God's better than your God. That's the same thing in the Syrians. Well, you see the God that we have that doesn't have a son that's God himself, and we, we pedophile magazines and booklets to door to door. You see, that God is better. The God door to door is better than your God that owns all the doors. The God that we come door to door, he's much better than the God that put the put the blood above the door on the two sides of the door and took the children of Israel out on the Passover night. You see, that God's better than your God. The God that we can eat and drink and manifest into a piece of bread and a cup of juice, really good hard juice, you see, that's not the God of the Bible you preach. And God hates that, according to what we're reading right now. When you compare what the gospel preaching God, Jesus Christ, who is God, virgin born of the tribe of Judah, who is Jewish himself, who suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. When you match your small G-O-D-S against my God of the Bible, You've angered God, and you can't come up to me and say, well, why don't you preach the more love of the God? Why? He ain't love you no more. You turn your way from Jesus Christ, you've angered him. You're on the wrong side. I will deliver all this great multitude. Don't worry about the numbers. You're outnumbered? I'll take care of them. I'll show you who the God of all gods is. I challenge you, God said. Into thy hand. He shall. Now watch. Ye. That's not the Syrians. He came. A man of God. Verse 28. That there came a man of God. Spank unto the king of Israel. God is showing a sign to Ahab. And all his men. You see all those people. You're outnumbered aren't you. They mocked me. They're relying on small gods. And other gods. So is Jezebel. So is the nation of Israel. We're having another Elijah Mount Carmel moment here that's not preached about. Oh, we preach about Elijah Mount Carmel and the fire came down. What about God versus gods? And the fact is, okay, fire didn't come down, but this little God describes as the Holy Spirit describes as a little flock of baby goats. Kicked the entire nations behind. All because they said our God is better than your God. Or the, God, the hill God is better than the plain God. Ahab, soldiers, children of Israel. I'm trying to prove to you like Elijah did. I am God. I want you guys to come back to me. That's what he's doing. great multitude in thy hand, ye shall know that I am the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Jehovah. And they pitched one over against, and they pitched one over against the other seven days. So one week. Here they are. Here's one on one side. Here's the other on the other side. They can see each other. They know each other. The battle is imminent. I mark my place here. This is not the warfare we have today. You push a button. You send a submarine. You send missiles. They're on one side. Israel's on the other side. They can see each other. Seven days. And so it was that in the seventh day, the battle joined. Okay, they're, they're moving in closer and closer. Nightfall would come. They stop. They set up their tents, their campus, start their campfires, cooking their meat, get ready to go to sleep. In the morning, they get up, they move it closer. 
Nightfall comes. They're doing this for seven days. Do you know somewhere else something happened to battle for seven days? Jericho. We're going to see that we're going to be looking again into Joshua again. History has repeated itself. The children of Israel, we're going to look tonight, are going into the promised land. God says, Here I am, God. All you got to do is march around the city seven days and then shout. Boom. But you saved Rahab. You've got to learn history to know history and to see the power of God. Now, there's one thing I do like about Facebook. I use it for the ministry. But the thing, you can look back in the past, the things you've written, and you can see where God's giving the victory where you forgot. You can see where people you met you haven't prayed for in a long time. Israel should right now be, as far as they're going through their history, I hope, this sounds familiar. It was seventh day the battle was joined. One week, here they are. Man against man. And the children of Israel slew of the Syrians a hundred thousand footmen in one day. <laughs> what happened to your God? The... <laughs> what happened to any God? I thought the valley God was more better than the hill God. You got your butt kicked. Again, this is the second time. The but the rest fled to Apic into the city. There, a wall fell upon twenty and twenty and seven thousand of the men that were left. Now, if Israel don't get this one, this definitely sounds familiar. A wall fell. The walls of Jericho fell. Israel got the victory. The entire city was destroyed. That were left. <laughs> Every that would say that that would that were left. It looks like the entire enemy, the entire Syrian army, those that left went into the city and God said, "Okay, boom, walls come down." It looked like everybody died eventually. And Ben Hadad fled. Let's look at chapter 20, verse 20 again. 2020. Somebody needs an, a, an eyesight. And, and they slew every one his man, and the Syrians fled. Israel pursued them, and Ben Hadad, the king of Syria, escaped on a horse with the horsemen back over here again. And Ben Hadad fled and came into the city into an inner chamber. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Ben Haydad, your gods are, are losers. This time it says he goes into a city. Not only does he go, he goes into the most center of the city, into an inner chain, a bomb shelter, some kind of shelter from from a storm, from an attack. You're not going to find me here. You locked me up. I'm secluded. I'm afraid. Get down on your knees, boy, and pray to that small GODS. Tell that G-O-D-S what a loser he is. How about that? And his servants said unto him, These are the ones that started the war? <laughs> I wouldn't be listening to these guys. Behold now, we have heard that the kings of the house of Israel are merciful kings. Let us, I pray thee, put sackcloth on our loins and ropes upon our heads and go out to the king of Israel pre-adventure he will save thy life so they girded sackcloth on their loins and put ropes on their heads and came to the king of Israel and they said thy servant ben Hadad saith I pray thee let me live and he said is he yet alive <laughs> I thought he'd be dead by now he is my brother. Joshua 9. Joshua 9 happened after Jericho. I believe it's the second war. Ai. Jericho Ai. Second war. There have been two wars in Kings. Chapter 9, Joshua, verse 1. And came to pass when all the kings 
Uh oh. Which were on this side, Jordan in the hills. Oh. And in the valley. Uh oh. <laughs> Somebody needs to go back. Israel needs to go back and get a lesson. And all the coasts of the great sea over against Lebanon, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, the Jebusite, I like saying those, heard thereof. That they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon, well, there's our people, heard that Joshua had done unto Jericho and Ai two battles, they did work willingly and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their asses, wine bottles, old and rent and bound up. Now the Syrians didn't go this far, but doesn't it look like a repeat? Of the, of the inhabitants of Gibeon and old shoes and cloth upon their feet and old garments upon them and all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua unto the king for Gilgal and said unto him and to the men of Israel we be come from a far country now therefore make a league with us. And the men of Israel said unto the Hivites free adventure ye dwell among us and how shall we make a league with you? And they said to Joshua we are thy servants. And Joshua said to him, Who are ye? From whence come thou ye? They said, From a very far country thy servants are come, because the name of the Lord thy God, we have heard the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt. How about we've heard the fame of two battles that got our butt kicked? Our gods are not working. And in your history, your enemies came to your Joshua, who wasn't a king, but he came to Joshua, and they repented, and they came to him, and they said, Please, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites, and were beyond Jordan, to Sion, king of Heshbon, to Og, king of Basha, which was in Astra. Where of our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spank to us? Okay, there's the servant, saying, Take victuals with you for your journey, and go meet them, and say unto them, We are the, your servants. Therefore now make a league with us. This our bread we took hot for our provisions, and out of our houses on the day we came forth to go up to you. But now, behold, it is dry as flies. In verse 14, the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel of the mount for the Lord. Ahab's going to do that. He's not going to ask God. And Joshua made peace with him. Ahab's going to do that. And made a league with him. Joshua, I mean, uh, Ahab's going to do that. And let them live. Ahab's going to do that. And the prince of the congregation swear unto them. And it came to pass at the end of three days that they had made a league with them, that they heard that they were their neighbors, and that they dwelt among them. In verse 18, the children of Israel smote them not. Should have. Because the princes of congregation swore unto them by the Lord God of Israel, and all the congregation murmured against the princes. Verse 20. This we will do to them. We will even let them live. Least wrath be upon us because of the oath which we have sworn to them. And the princess said, and Let them live, but let them be hewers of the wood and drawers of water unto all the congregation, as the princess has promised them. And then they become a curse and they become part of Israel. And we come back over here. The last thing we're going to look at tonight is. He's my brother. No, he's not. What are you doing? Joshua says, these will be your people. No, they're not. What are you doing? Man, if God could not play out Joshua 8 and 9, 7 to these people. I think it's been a while since they've been in synagogue reading the scriptures. Or maybe not synagogue, but reading the scriptures of the Old Testament. And we're going to find that Ahab, he's going to be, man, he's bad. So we go further into, all right, he's my brother. No, he's not. Verse 33, now the men did diligently observe whether anything would come from him. They're watching him. What's he going to do? Are we dead? Are we okay? And did hastily catch it. What did they catch? He's my brother. Got him. 
Watch. And catch it. And they said, Thy brother Ben Hadad. They listened to the words. Then he said, Go ye bring him. Then Ben Hadad came forth to him. And he caused him to come up into the chariot. Bosom buddies. They were just enemies. He is an enemy of God. God said, he said that the, the, the gods of the hills are not God as this. And he did not give God to the Bible. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the credit. And Ben Hadad says, we're brothers. It's, we're bosom buddies. We're pals. Later on, you're going to read in the New Testament, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. And Ben Hadad said unto him, The cities which my father took from thy father, I will restore. And thou shalt make streets for thee in Damascus. And my father made in Samaria, as my father made in Samaria. And say, I have, I will send thee away with this covenant, the enemy. So, like Joshua, so he made a covenant with him and sent them away. We're going to stop right there. Joshua didn't do too well. Ahab. God has played out the history of the Jewish people in the book of Joshua. And Ahab did the same thing Joshua did. Somebody didn't learn history. America has dissolved and changed and is changing. History. I read the other day the public school systems are going to teach now that the Civil War, the main idea of the Civil War was only because of the black slaves down south. Nothing else. Two nations, two brothers went against each other just for the colored people in the, in the cotton fields. That's far from the chance. This nation was broken. Abraham Lincoln wanted to make it the United States and there were people who said, no, we want to be independent states. One thing men don't learn from history is they don't learn from history. You need to study history. 